excited about this song all day. I think it's a really good intro. So, my name is Christine, um, and just by show of hands, how many of you here are regulators or work for government in any way? A couple of least from Sweden. Anyone else? No. No. Okay, so you know what? I'm going to tell you a little about how I believe governments can help the growing crowd economy. Um, and then I'm going to give you some pointers on what to take back to your governments. So, I work for government. I work for the Danish Ministry for Business and Growth. I've done that for a number of years. Um, and maybe to start up about why we're working with crowd economy. So, this is probably a bit hard to read, but this is uh, a picture of the Danish capital system. It's not a full picture, but it's mainly what it looks like. Denmark, as most European countries, all SMEs, or most SMEs and startups, they go to the banks when they want finance. This is also sort of true for the US, but it's very outspoken in the EU. Now, I don't think it comes as a surprise to any of you that there's been a financial crisis. It's been very hard for SMEs, and for startups to get money from the banks. In Denmark, this is brightening up a bit, but SMEs are still experiencing that it's almost impossible to get a loan. So the real problem here is that almost none of the bank, oh, sorry, none of the, the companies who get a no in the bank will look for alternatives. Only about 6% of SMEs getting a no in the banks will look for an alternative finance. That means that 94% of companies will just give up whatever venture they were going into, whatever export they were starting, whatever you know, uh, expansion they were thinking about. They'll give that up or put it on hold. So we're seeing crowdfunding not as the golden solution to all problems in the world, but as one more tool in the toolbox. And the really interesting thing here is it's new money coming into the market. So it's not money coming from, um, from public funds. It's not market coming, or money coming from different uh, parties. It's new money coming in from private investors, which make this really, really interesting since the, the economy is growing so rapidly. So, crowdfunded companies and crowdfunding platforms have basically grown out of nothing. Since 2009, we've seen this rapid involvement in the crowd economy. The business models they're bringing to the market are disruptive. Now, I work for government. We're not that disruptive. We don't really like thinking things coming out of nowhere. It makes us really, really nervous. We don't change course that easily. I sometimes compare governments to super sangers. You know, try turning that one around. It does take quite a while. So on one hand, we have the very disruptive, fastly grown uh, companies. And on the other hand, we have governments who are seeing these companies coming out of nowhere, it feels like that when you don't work that fast. And we have to adapt. And the very easy thing is to do this. Um, thank you, no thank you. We're gonna over-regulate you. We're gonna say, um, we're not really sure what you're doing, we don't really understand it, so let's just shut it down. And I think, at least in Denmark, a lot of startups feel that this is what they meet whenever they contact government institutions. We are very hard to reach. You won't find my phone number on any government web page. You won't find my email address. 
because basically you'll have to go through headquarters to find me. So you'll have to know that there's this person in the Danish Business Authority that's a part of the ministry who's working with entrepreneurs and crowdfunding and have to call and ask for her. And you know, you'll be very lucky if I want to take a meeting with you. So obviously, I don't work that way. <laughs> I don't think it's very functional. Um, I do believe that if governments want to help the growing crowd economy, and since it's a good alternative, the first slide, I do think they should, they need to be more approachable. So they need a new approach to how to deal with these new models. Now, we've done this in Denmark. That's not the perfect answer. It's not the perfect solution. But we've tried to do it at least to crowdsource policies. What we did was we discovered crowdfunding a couple of years ago, um, decided to promote it. Basically, it was uh, myself and a colleague who'd backed a couple of companies on Kickstarter um, and thinking, why are there no Danish companies here? It's a perfect tool for Danish startups. Why aren't they using it? Turned out they didn't know it was there. Um, so we, we started saying, OK, what can we do to promote this? How can we, how can we make them aware? And at the same time, the Danish Crowdfunding Association was founded. The Danish Chamber of Commerce also got their eyes up for crowdfunding. So a lot of factors came together. And then, lucky for us, uh, my minister found out that, hey, crowdfunding, that's that's pretty cool. And they got an initiative through government to actually look into how can we promote crowdfunding. So we started that work. Um, but found out, yeah, it's all good and dandy to want to promote crowdfunding, but nobody knew the rules. So basically, half of the companies in Denmark who had used reward-based crowdfunding was totally illegal. They didn't pay any taxes of whatever came in from their campaigns. Uh, they didn't apply any VAT. Uh, you know, it was just, it was a mess. If you called the tax authorities three times with the same question, you would get three different answers. So not really a situation that anyone was happy with. So we took two steps back, said, you know what, we need to make the rules clear. And we sorted that work. And what we did was, we did a report. Um, it's out in Danish. It's going to be available in English soon. And it basically involves four different ministries and five agencies. So it was a massive work. So just within the government, that's sort of a crowdsourcing exercise. But what we did, and what I can recommend you to go back to your countries to do, was that we took the rules that we mapped, and then we went out and tested them. So we actually went out and took a hold of the platforms, the uh, companies, and the investors, and asked them, if these are the rules, can you actually use them? And then we took those answers, went back to the tax authorities saying, you know what, the way that you're mapping that, the way you say that applies to reward-based crowdfunding, that's really not functioning because the way we transfer money from platforms to companies. So the tax authorities, OK, so honestly, their reply was, we're not going to do anything about that now. But <laughs> they are aware of it. Uh, but on some of the other issues that we had with financial authorities, they actually went in and changed their interpretation of the law because we told them, you know what, the framework that we are putting up simply won't work in real life. So the report took almost a year to make. <clears throat> it's not exactly fast when you want to work with government. But we ensured that once it came out, industry could actually use it, that would it, it would actually be applicable to industry. So, just to sum up on that, you know, 
If we want to move forward, we as governments need to be more open in our approach. Things are developing so fastly within this economy that we simply can't just shut the door and take our sweet time in developing the right framework, not knowing if it will actually work when we put it out into the real world. So we need to work together with you guys. What's been really key and what I find throughout most of Europe, actually, I'm a part of the European Crowdfunding Stakeholders Forum. It's put down by the Commission, so that's why the name is so long. That's a mix of member states and private organizations. It's a great network. But what it also does is that allows me to talk to my colleagues in Finland, in Germany, in the UK, in France, in Italy, and actually compare what we're doing. So what works? What works in Italy? Why isn't that working? Why won't that work in Denmark? We're seeing, you know, how can we harmonize legislation between the EU countries? Because the Commission is working quite slowly. But we can do it on a different level. So we can already now prepare and harmonize the legislation now. And we can do it alongside the industry. So what I'd recommend you guys to do is to actually find that person, that person from your country who believes in crowdfunding. They are there, I promise you. If you don't know them, we might, because we know them from that forum, and they believe in crowdfunding. So find that person. Get them to be your spokesperson inside government you won't change anything unless you work alongside government. So I think, um, I think I'll stop there with that and uh, be open to questions. So you can, you can see that I should have said, instead of very nice women, I should have said very significant women leaders. So I will say that. Um, questions? Yes. In the back, back of the room. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Heikki Varis from a, a sustainable crowdsource delivery company, which is actually doing crowdsourcing for doing the labor. Like, I would like to compare to Uber, but done kind of the European way, the right way. Uh, so we've been working or trying to work with the local kind of public sector because we see that this is, I mean, they are the ones that are promoting sustainability, promoting things that people have been helping each other and so on. And they cannot do the same kind of process that you said that you did on the crowdfunding. So I was asking that, uh, have you done the same thing for the crowdsourcing so that, that you would have been able to kind of uh, revised the regulations and, and solve these issues that are preventing people, I mean the mass market, from participating in these so that they wouldn't see the threat that, okay, somebody's coming after me if, if I do some illegal uh, kind of work, for example. So the thing about crowdfunding is that it's quite easy to see that there is a problem with regulation and that regulation is unclear. So that was fairly easy to, um, to approach. I'm also working with crowdsourcing. That I haven't been talk to, talking about that at all. Uh, we don't see the same regulatory problems, at least not in Denmark. There's something about IPR and you know, have, who owns the solution once it's, it's out there. Um, that's fairly easy to solve if you put down the right framework before you do a challenge, for instance. Um, I, th I think with crowdsourcing, it's what we're doing is mainly promoting it. We're working with, we have two challenges coming up in the fall from the government. So we're seeing that as a way to enable entrepreneurs to do solutions for governments. Um, I don't think, there's not exactly the same regulatory problems with crowdsourcing. At least we don't experience that. So it sounds like that would be an excellent thing for you to share your experiences with your colleagues in these forums that to help them actually move uh, forward in this area as well. 
I don't think we'll see a crowdsourcing forum. Um, we do promote crowdsourcing <laughs> to colleagues as well. Um, I think it's very natural when you have colleagues in the European Union or in the Commission who work with crowdfunding, they'll often be very enthusiastic about the possibilities of crowdsourcing as well. And I do believe, I firmly believe, that we'll see more governments using crowdsourcing as a way to, one, reach out to citizens, to bring them into policymaking, and two, to get innovative solutions on especially IT systems. Thank you. Other questions? So, Christine, you might know this, you might not. I certainly don't. Um, do, you, do you know how much money Danish companies have raised through crowdfunding? Oh, see, my financial ministry always asks me about that. It's extremely hard to measure. Um, until October 2013, you had to register as an American company mm -hmm. to crowdfund and Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. um, so all, company, all Danish companies who funded before that date doesn't appear to be Danish. Um, we don't have any numbers or any way to measure how much money is being raised on global platforms simply because we can't trace the money. Hmm. And we do ask Danish companies um, and do experience a massive increase of the use of crowdfunding mm -hmm. in almost to a point where we're starting to say crowdfunding isn't the solution on everything. Mm -hmm. It's not a golden ticket to the yeah. Nirvana capital land. It's hard work. It does cost money. It's not for everyone. So, Do you have any sense of how many crowdfunding companies are located in Denmark? Uh, how many companies who've used who, crowdfunding? Yeah. No, the actual platforms. The platforms. Yeah, yeah so we have uh, five lending platforms who've been approved by the FCA in Denmark. Mm -hmm. We have um, two equity coming into Denmark, mm -hmm. uh, one localized in Denmark who's starting up in a month or two. I've been saying that for half a year, so I hope that's that will soon be true. Um, and then we have, I think, about three donation-based and about the same in reward-based. But they're very small. Okay, so there's nobody among that group of players that you would expect to be even the top player in Denmark? Yeah, there are. Uh, I think our two, two main lending platforms, Lendino and Flex Funding, mm -hmm. they're seeing a really exponential growth in the numbers both in the numbers of companies wanting to use that as a way to raise money, but also actually, and, and very positively, mm -hmm. an increasing number of people who want to lend out money to companies. Yeah. Um, so, so and the, they are really market yeah. leaders. So the, the, you're saying it looks like within the lending group yeah. that every country will have a couple of top players. I think so. I think what we're seeing, and, and that's, that makes it really interesting politically, it makes it very easy to sell to politicians, is that in the lending space, we're seeing local companies being funded mm -hmm. by local people. Mm -hmm. So I can lend out money to the hotel in my hometown. Mm -hmm. I can see that as a point. So it, it gets sort of a social feeling. So um, we're really focused in Denmark about supporting rural areas. Uh, giving, creating more growth in rural areas. I think that's main, mainly true throughout Europe. Um, and that is a really good selling point for politicians, that lending-based crowdfunding actually create growth and employment in rural areas. And the other two categories, donor and uh, uh, prize-based or delivery-based, whatever Reward -based. Sure what you call it. Um, on donation-based, it's not really for companies, right? Um, maybe I'm a cynic, but who want to give away money for companies so they can grow without me getting anything in return? Um, that's mainly for NGOs. It's still a relatively small space. Um, on reward base, that's, for now, that has been the focus for Danish companies, but they are using Kickstarter and not the local platforms. Um, they're doing fairly well on Kickstarter. 
Um, we are seeing the local platform called Boomerang. That's a Danish platform. He mainly has culture entrepreneurs. So, and this is just a last comment. Um, one could suggest that as a government, your lack of concern about that, and I don't mean that as a negative, you've got to set priorities. I, I could kind of make the argument that it's partially because that kind of crowdfunding funding isn't actually aligned with any of the impacts you want to have as a government. I mean, if you, I don't know this market that well, but in the U.S., the bulk of, the, of that type of crowdfunding goes into personal projects, movies, videos, games. Uh, it creates one job at most, and it never grows anywhere that would be considered any kind of impact that a government would be interested in. Well, you know, we, we see crowdfunding not as a total thing or as a unified thing, but, you know, reward-based crowdfunding is perfect for entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with a consumer-related product. Lending-based crowdfunding is perfect for a more mature company that's two years old. That's a requirement for most Danish uh, platforms. And equity-based crowdfunding is for the growth companies. So it's sort of an ecosystem, to use that word. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Check that one off. Um, it is an ecosystem that feeds into growth. And um, no, we're not concerned. We're seeing it as a really interesting new possibility for finding finance alongside business angels, venture capitals, banks. You know, it's just a part of that toolbox. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs>